It's a crisis press conference, and in public relations, um, if you just watch the news today, uh, there's so much PR out there, and spokespeople for major corporations, whether it's a civilian corporation or, or government, have to get up in front of a camera and up in front of CNN in the world and, and answer questions. And uh, in the case of a crisis, there, you have to prepare ahead of time for a crisis. And I think it's important that we prepare kids you know, this is as real as it gets without actually having a crisis, uh, what, what we put them through in this particular scenario. And uh, I think it's important that they know, have a taste of what it's like to be in front of lots of cameras, television cameras, and lots of lights and, and reporters badgering them with questions. And I think we, not doing it is doing them a disservice. You kind of feel like you're going to throw up initially. Um, you're really just anxiety ridden and really nervous. But once, you know, you get into your, like, you know, third question, it kind of is like a really exhilarating kind of, like, energy high feeling where you're just fielding questions and you kind of feel like Olivia Pope in a way. <laughs> Steve actually was an acting uh, public affairs officer for the Pentagon for a really long time, and he's also ex-Marine. So he has a lot of experience, so... He knows when you're doing well, and he knows when you're not doing well, and he knows when you're prepared, and he knows when you're not. <laughs> From 92 to 96, I was a spokesperson for the, the Defense Department, and uh, it just happens that that part of the world, we use the scenario out of Okinawa, Japan, and the, and the rape of a 12-year-old girl by three military people. And we use that because I was the voice in Washington at the time. <clears throat> so my, my background as a spokesman for the Marine Corps and the Defense Department plays perfectly into, into what I teach in public relations.